As the vaccine rollout continues, and there are now debates around mandatory vaccination in some sectors and by some employers in our society, there's also now a chance to assess what kind of impact vaccines are actually having. Many millions of people have now received at least one jab. Some have received the Johnson & Johnson injection. Professor Mark Mendelson is the Professor of Infectious Diseases at UCT. He's also head of the Division of Infectious Diseases and HIV Medicine at Hrutuskir Hospital. Professor, good afternoon to you and thank you for finding the time to speak to us this afternoon. What kind of difference in COVID-19 symptoms are you seeing between patients who are vaccinated and patients who are not, being, who are not vaccinated at Hrutuskir? Well, good afternoon, Stephen. I mean, what we're seeing, um, as, you, as you outlined in your introduction, is that in the hospital uh, and in hospitals across South Africa, we're predominantly seeing patients with severe COVID pneumonia who are unvaccinated. So it's not so much a difference in the hospitals about who, whether they're vaccinated or unvaccinated. The people we're seeing in the hospitals are unvaccinated patients. I mean, there are a few that, are, that have vaccine and that we would expect, but what we're seeing is the severe disease in the unvaccinated um, citizens. And that is as, it, that is as it has been described in a number of other countries, including the UK and Israel and elsewhere. So in other words, what you're seeing is that you just don't really have people who are vaccinated against COVID-19 presenting with severe symptoms. Not really at the moment. As I said, there are some um, who will get severe COVID, but um, I work on a high care unit, um, which is sort of one down from the intensive care unit. And uh, both in our high care units and in our intensive care units, um, it's extremely rare at the moment to see anybody who's vaccinated. And again, as you said in your introduction, uh, on that 24 hour period, the graphic that's currently circulating it tells, uh, tells the story that really, um, if you're vaccinated, you are uh, largely protected from severe disease, hospitalization and death. And that's the reason that uh, we feel that people, everybody should be vaccinated. And the people who work with you, I mean, people who have been vaccinated, I'm talking about nurses and doctors. Now, these are people who are exposed to COVID-19 literally on an hourly basis, especially in the high care ward where you work, in the ICU ward where, where I imagine you have come into contact with. Are your workers finding that they're not getting COVID-19 or severe symptoms as well? Well, again, we're not, we're not seeing many, uh, I mean, we're not seeing healthcare workers predominantly getting severe disease requiring hospitalization. Um, or death. There, there have been healthcare workers who have had severe disease, and there have been one or two healthcare workers who have sadly passed. But, you know, the, the issue is that one has to come back to is that no vaccine is 100%, uh, has 100% efficacy, unfortunately. So you are going to get the odd person. But I mean, the, the relative risk of severe disease, hospitalization, and death if you're unvaccinated is absolutely massive. So, you know, if you want to stay out of hospital, you want to have your best chance of staying alive, get vaccinated and quickly. It seems the arguments around vaccines are, in terms of COVID-19 are becoming really overwhelming. As you say, this ties in with what's happening in other countries. I imagine your graph, the graph in South Africa and the graph in other places is going to look pretty similar. Yeah, absolutely. Um, do you think that as the, are you seeing the number of people actually being admitted coming down because more and more people are being vaccinated as well? Well, we're seeing, uh, I mean, it's, a, it's, a, it's fairly complex. I mean, there's a number of factors playing into that. Um, one of them is that we look to be on the, on the downslope of the third wave. So we would expect um, a reduction in hospitalizations. It usually delays. It's usually a period of about two weeks. Um, between the, the change in the number of cases and the change in the hospitalizations just because of obviously of how, how, how the disease works. So we are seeing a reduction. Um, we are, I, I think the problem is that not enough of the population in total is vaccinated to really be able to answer your question well, um, Stephen. But I think, you know, the fact that we are really not seeing um, many patients who are vaccinated really tells the story. Um, we're going to start to see, you know, more and more people being vaccinated. The hope is that this is what happens in the future. And there's no reason to think that it won't. As more and more people are vaccinated, it almost doesn't matter if it's Johnson and Johnson and Pfizer. The science says that their efficacy rates are roughly the same. I'll emphasize the word roughly. But, I mean, it would seem 
that that's going to be the prognosis, that if this continues, we're going to be over the worst of COVID-19. Obviously, if we vaccinate people quickly enough, there won't even be a fourth wave. Well, I think that's, again, a difficult, a difficult statement to make because there's a number of variables. I mean, firstly, um, there is a difference between the sort of immunity that protects us against severe disease and death and the sort of immunity that protects us against infection. I mean, the immune system is an incredibly complex um, set, of, set of devices, really, um, and there is some difference. But, um, and it also obviously depends on, on, the, on how the virus uh, can change and whether new variants occur that are able to um, really get around our immune system's ability to control transmission, which is more around the antibody response. The severe disease and death is more about a separate part of the immune system, the cell-mediated immunity. Um, but I think, again, across the board for all the vaccines, they seem to be doing the same thing. And so you're right, it doesn't really matter if it's, vaccine, if it's Johnson & Johnson or if it's um, Pfizer or, or other vaccines that are currently on the market. They're all protecting against severe disease, hospitalization and death, which is the number one thing you want them to do. Professor Mendelssohn, I mean, there's certain decisions that uh, professors of infectious diseases can make and advise on, as, uh, which is the position that you occupy. There's certain decisions that uh, lawyers, judges and politicians have to make. But there is a debate in our society about sort of mandatory vaccinations. In other words, not forcing everyone to get vaccinated necessarily, but saying if you want to work in this field or in this building, you have to get a vaccination. Do you have a view on that or are you going to leave it to the politicians? I would always leave it to the politicians, even. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, look, I, I think we've always tried to encourage, particularly in healthcare workforce, that one is vaccinated, not just about against COVID, but that we get influenza, annual influenza vaccines. All healthcare workers are vaccinated against hepatitis B, you know, mainly to protect themselves. So I think there are professions that should think very, very carefully about mandatory vaccination, or at least, you know, incentivizing for vaccination. Um, you know, I can only say on a personal note, I would really hope that as many people as possible uh, decide to protect themselves um, with vaccine because we really, really want to protect our citizens. And that's what we're asking for. Professor Mark Mendelssohn, thank you very much indeed. I do appreciate it. Professor of Infectious Diseases at UCT, head of the Division of Infectious Diseases at Grotescue Hospital in Cape Town.